Good morning. Thank you to St. George Parish. Today we celebrate the feast of the Holy Body and Blood of Christ. Please stand. <laughs> sisters, we welcome you back to our faith community. For today, we are reminded that God gave his people manna in the desert. In this celebration, he gives us himself for our nourishment. Now let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, living bread from heaven, Lord have mercy. Lord have Lord mercy. Have mercy. Christ Jesus, cup of salvation, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, source of nourishment and grace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, highest. and on and earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, so that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. You who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its sarah serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock 
and fed you in the desert with manna of food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Lord Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders, and with the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly turns his word. Praise, Praise the, Lord, the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statues and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord, Lord Jerusalem. Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless is not a participation in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is not a participation in the blood of Christ. Because the loaf of bread is one, we though many are one body, for we all partake of the loaf, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. says the Lord. Whoever reads this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this feast of Corpus Christi, the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, I decided to do something a little different for my homily. Instead of developing the scripture of the day, which I always do, I will instead offer a refresher mini seminar, let's call it, on, on the Eucharist. What do we believe about the Eucharist? 
How should we prepare ourselves to receive Holy Communion? What's the proper technique for receiving Holy Communion? It's a good idea, I think, once in a while for us to be reminded of the, the basics of the Eucharist. Receiving Holy Communion is clearly very important to us as Catholics. Each week we stream up that aisle to receive Holy Communion. And I do compliment you for doing so reverently. But anything, anytime we do something habitually, even good things like receiving Holy Communion, it's a good idea to periodically be reminded of, of the whys and the hows. So let's begin with the foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ, who is the Eucharist. It's troubling that polls asking Catholics what we believe about Holy Communion show some serious confusion in our attitudes. In a 1995 poll of Catholics, of Catholics, only 30% of those surveyed said that they believe that they are actually receiving the body, blood, the soul and divinity of Jesus Christ under the appearance of bread and wine. My guess is that today, 25 years later, it would be even lower than 30%. That's a problem. Our Catholic belief that the Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus not just bread and wine, is clearly taught in the Bible and throughout the 2,000-year tradition of the church. And Jesus says it right out to us today in the gospel. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. So there you have it. And from that basic doctrine of our faith flows many of our traditional practices. Just a few examples. That's why we genuflect or bow to the tabernacle when we enter church or when we walk in front of the tabernacle. Jesus is in there, not just wafers of bread. That's why the sanctuary candle burns, to remind us of the presence of Jesus in the tabernacle. That's why we fast for a minimum of one hour before receiving Holy Communion, out of respect for the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And that's why after communion, either Father or I purify the vessels used during mass. We don't throw them in the dishwasher. We clean them using special linens called purificators. And before these purificators are laundered, they're first soaked in a bowl of water to remove any remnants of the body and blood of Jesus, and then that water is poured directly into the ground, not down the drain, into the sewer. That's how much respect we have for the Eucharist. And I'm sure you know that there's a team of about a dozen people here at St. George's who perform that important ministry. So in light of these beliefs and practices then, we should receive Holy Communion only if we can do so worthily. We don't receive Holy Communion because everyone around us does. We don't receive Holy Communion because we're worried what people might think if we don't. We present ourselves to receive Holy Communion only if we can do so worthily, and that means that we are not in a state of mortal sin. Now, the notion of mortal and venial sin is a subject for a sermon of its own. But for now, I'll simply say that if we're in a state of serious sin, we must go to confession before receiving Holy Communion. And that makes perfect sense in light of our belief that Holy Communion is the body and blood of Jesus. It would be disrespectful and irreverent and even a desecration 
for us to receive Jesus in Holy Communion when we are in a state of unforgiven mortal sin. And our technique for receiving Holy Communion also goes back to the doctrine of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. When we receive Holy Communion, we treat Jesus as the King that he is. We bow to the King. We make a throne with our hands or our tongue for the King, although we would prefer that you not receive communion on the tongue until the vaccine for the virus is released. If we're right-handed, our right hand supports our left hand, making it easy to place the host in our mouth. Left-handed people use the opposite technique. After receive, receiving Holy Communion, if we receive on the hand, we should always consume that consecrated host right away. Don't walk away with it in your hand. And again, consistent with the reverence that we have for the real body of Jesus in Holy Communion, we should never be chewing gum when we present ourselves for Holy Communion, and we should never grab the consecrated host from the minister of Holy Communion. It's not unusual for us to see some of these behaviors at weddings, funerals, sometimes among uncatechized young people who rarely attend Mass. A brief word, too, about our teachings regarding Catholics receiving Holy Communion in the Protestant Church and vice versa, Protestants receiving Holy Communion in the Catholic Church. Neither of these practices is allowed. And I know that many of us feel uneasy about it because it makes it seem like we think we're better than non-Catholics. It can come across as religious snobbery. But that's not it at all. The Eucharist is all about unity. And sadly, Christians have been fractured since the Protestant Reformation. Our practice of not receiving communion in a Protestant church and asking Protestants not to receive in our Catholic church simply reflects the reality that we are not one. We each have our own theologies and practices. And of course, we hope and pray for the day when that'll no longer be the case. In today's gospel, Jesus spelled out our theology of the Eucharist. It is just as much a miracle today as the time he fed the 5,000 from a few morsels of bread and fish. Every time that we come here to Mass, that miracle repeats itself through Father in the consecration of the bread and wine. The Eucharist is the bread of life. May we receive it often so that Jesus can guide our day-to-day -day lives. And I suppose more to the point of today's sermon, may we receive it well. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Lord, the giver of life, who <coughs> proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing God's great love for us, we confidently bring our needs before him. For God to strengthen Pope Francis, our Bishop Robert, our priests, and all who serve the church in their mission of bringing the light of Christ to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority and help formulate public policy to be guided by the Holy Spirit in all they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or in need, especially during this pandemic, to find comfort in the love of Christ and hope in the promise of eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people in war-torn countries to experience God's peace and security, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community to have God's love and truth be poured into our hearts and sustain, sustain us in all that we do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died to find eternal joy in their heavenly home, especially Bernard Walsh, and Kenneth Blank, whom we remember at this Mass, as well as Margaret Phillips and Cecile de Betancourt, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions in our book of prayer and that we silently place before our loving God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of abundant love, hear the needs of your people and respond with mercy and compassion. We offer our prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to our almighty God. We accept the sacrifice at your hands. In the glory of his name. O Lord, our God, grant your church the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery and in the offerings that we present here. 
We ask you this, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ, our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to share this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh which was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels and thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end, we acclaim... Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, save your mother world. For oh, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and, and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon this oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. George and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Bernard and Kenneth, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you, that their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom. But there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall become like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, the glory, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are unable to be with us at Mass today and receive Holy Communion, you can make a spiritual communion. A spiritual communion, recommended by the saints for centuries, is a prayer professing faith in Jesus' presence in the Eucharist and inviting him to live in our hearts. You make a spiritual communion by beginning with an examination of your conscience and making a good act of contrition. We will pause here to allow you to do so. This type of communion can never replace receiving our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion at Mass, but it can help us to stay closer to Jesus in this most blessed sacrament of his body and blood in these extraordinary times. Body now we will say a prayer given to us by St. Alphonse Liguori for the purpose of inviting Christ into our hearts. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, grant that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. For the next few weeks, we will continue to offer one live Mass in the church at 10 a.m., in order to attend this Mass, you will need to sign up on our parish website beginning at 9 a.m. on the Tuesday of the week immediately preceding this Mass. When you have signed up, know that you will have a seat here in church. Remember to bring a face covering with you so that an usher or greeter can seat you. You will need to be in your seat by 9.55 a.m. Also, for the same period of time, we will continue to offer the weekend Mass by way of live stream or recording on Sundays at 10 a.m. as a service to you. Please check our parish website for frequent updates. Before we conclude today's Mass, I have a couple of announcements to make to you in regard to clergy assignments. Father Joseph Nally, who's been senior priest here at St. George's for the past year, has retired. He's been effective immediately due to issues of health. We wish Father Nally a speedy recovery, and we pray that certainly that his retirement years will certainly be blessed ones. A priest never retires fully from ministry, as of course, celebrating mass and sacraments are all still part of his ministry, regardless of what the stage in life he's at. So. Father, will certainly pray we'll have fruitful years as far as being able to continue this celebration of Mass and the sacraments. Apart on July 1st, I am very pleased to announce that we will have an associate pastor once again. He is Father Tiago da Silva, not to be confused with our seminarian here. <laughs> Father Tiago was ordained last year, and for the past year has been the associate pastor at St. Mary of the Assumption Parish in Milford. He will, as I said, he will arrive here on the 1st of July. And I will also tell you this, it will be the first time in my priesthood that I will not be the tallest priest in the house. <laughs> Father is six foot five. You'll easily be able to spot him. He's looking forward to coming here. He's certainly very enthused about the uh, prospect of coming here to be associate pastor at this parish. And I know it may take a little longer than usual, but I know that all of you will make him feel welcome here and that he will certainly get to know you over the course of time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Yeah.